For the second straight week, the Pittsburgh Steelers take on a team from New York traveling to Pittsburgh on primetime football this week against the New York Football Giants on Monday Night Football. Welcome into Steelers Talk. I'm your host, Jack Sperry. And on this week's preview, I'm going to be letting you guys know everything you need to know about the New York Giants, their scheme, what they like to do, the trends for both sides. And then also, I got my keys to victory, a full scouting report on Daniel Jones. And of course, at the end of the show, I have my official Week 8 score prediction. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But before we get into it here, make sure you guys click that subscribe button because we are currently doing a subscriber battle with our frenemies at the Giants Now uh, channel here at Chat Sports. So we do have a Giants channel here at Chat Sports. It's hosted by Marshall Green. And right now, they're beating us by just nine subs, guys. All right, so if you're new here, make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now to help us beat the Giants. And if that's not enough to get you to click that subscribe button, how about, how about this? Shout out to my guy Jack Sperry, but the Steelers Nation, the Steelers real ones. Look, it's going to be a lot of L's for you guys on Monday Night Football. I hope you're going to be all right when Daniel Jones goes from 1-15 to 2-15 on primetime football. We're beating you on the football field and also the Super Chat battles. Yinzers. <laughs> Isn't he charming, Coop? Yeah, he, I love him. He is crazy, man. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button. He's talking shit. Shut him up right now. Click that subscribe button right now and help us win this sub battle if you're new here. Okay, so let's get into this week's preview because this is going to be a lot of fun on Monday Night Football. You got the 5-2 and two Pittsburgh Steelers coming off that big-time win against the New York Jets, absolutely demolishing them in the second half, 31 straight unanswered points. And then you got the Giants, who have definitely struggled this year, sitting at 2-5, and five, really looking to really save their season with a win uh, on Monday Night Football against the Black and Gold. So you take a look at the results so far, so far for New York. Uh, they took a couple losses in a row to start the season to the Vikings and Commanders. Then they got a win against the Browns. If you ask me, that's not too impressive. Okay. Then you lose against the Dallas Cowboys. Then you then you win against the Seahawks. That was definitely their most impressive win so far on the road in Seattle, scoring 29 points. Daniel Jones actually played pretty decent in that one. But over the last two weeks, the Giants have only scored a combined 10 points against the Bengals and Eagles, respectively. Two struggling defenses, so they currently sit at 2-5. and five. From a schematic standpoint, here's what you can expect from the New York Giants. Their head coach, Brian Dable, I have a lot of respect for. He runs a modern pro spread offense, and I think that Daniel Jones, their quarterback, really limits him, okay? And I'll get into Daniel here uh, later in today's show, but I really respect Brian Dable and the job he's done in New York, despite some of the pitfalls at the quarterback position. Then on defense, they switched it up a little bit. They went to Shane Bowen, the former Titans defensive coordinator under Mike Vrabel. He runs a Belichick-style 3-4 type of defense, and uh, they've been playing a lot better uh, over the last several weeks here, and we'll, we'll be discussing both sides of the football today. But let's start with the offense here. The key pieces that you need to know, Daniel Jones, Motor, Devin Singletary, they're running back, and then uh, two receivers, Malik Neighbors and Darius Slayton, two guys with a lot of speed, uh, two guys that can route run a little bit, and especially Neighbors is extremely, extremely dangerous as a number one receiving threat. In the trenches here, this is the matchup that you guys can expect. Speaking about the New York Giants offensive line, it's kind of in shambles, and it has been for a while. Josh Azudu is the starting left tackle. He's not very good, all right? He's a backup. They lost Andrew Thomas for the season. Then you got John Runyon, who's okay. John Michael Schmitz, their center, isn't very good. Um, uh, in his second year out of Minnesota, Greg Van Roten is just okay. And then Jermaine Illuminor, he's fine, but he's really not going to be a matchup for T.J. Watt, in my opinion. So the Steelers should absolutely have the advantage in the trenches here. And you take a look at the team trends, you guys can just see the mismatch here. I mean, the Steelers have a top five defense in the National Football League. Um, you, know, top, you know, top two in points per game allowed. So you're making big plays when you need to make them. They're top five in, in red zone percentage, and the Giants are just falling behind in every single one of these categories. I don't have to talk to you guys forever about this mismatch here. You look at the points per game trends. The Giants are scoring 14.1 points per game, and the Steelers are allowing 14.4 points per game. So it's sitting at around 14 points is what the expectation is going to be for the New York football giants. That is if the trends uh, remain steady here. Then you look to the defensive side of the ball and they, they have a pretty decent defense, man. I'm not going to lie, especially up front. Brian Burns is the guy that they've spent, um, you know, big draft capital on this offseason in a big time trade. Dexter Lawrence is probably the best nose tackle in football. We'll talk about him later in today's show. A couple of young corners in Deontay Banks and Andrew Phillips. I was very high on both of those guys coming out of college. And then Tyler Newbin out of Minnesota, their, their rookie safety is really having a good start to his. 
NFL career. And you guys can see the Giants' numbers on defense a bit better than they are on offense. Okay, they're, they're third and third down percentage, so that's a number to really keep in mind there. The Steelers are kind of in the middling of the NFL. They're doing a good job of, of not turning the ball over. Uh, they're right smack dab in the middle in terms of points per game right now. But uh, with Russell Wilson, and it does seem like this offense has a higher scoring potential. If you believe the trends here, the Steelers are expected to score um, about 23 points on Monday night football. And once again, these are pretty similar here with the 23 for the Steelers and the 21.3 for the Giants. So if you believe the, the trends here, uh, that would predict a 23-14 to 14 win for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A pretty comfortable win on Monday night primetime. Uh, but what I'll say about the trends, especially when it comes to the to the Pittsburgh Steelers offense, is that you got to take them with a grain of salt because a lot of those numbers and a, a large bulk of those numbers was with Justin Fields as this team's quarterback. Now you're in with Russell Wilson. You take a look here what the Jets were giving up per game in terms of points heading into last week, 18 points per game, and the Steelers' offense put up 37 on them. All right, that was a top 10 scoring defense that the Steelers' offense absolutely ran through last week. So with Russell Wilson, I think this is a completely different unit than what it was with Justin Fields. And you take a look at the comparison between the defense the Steelers played last week in the New York Jets and this week in the New York Giants, and you guys will see a lot of similarities. Now, the Giants are a little bit better on third down, but overall, man, they're in the same ballpark of just about every other category except yards per play, and the Jets were better in that, in that department there. So I think that the Jets' defense has been taking a lot of flack this week, um, but I think that They've actually been pretty decent so far this year. They've been above average to this point in the year. And the, and the Pittsburgh Steelers and their offense, led by Russell Wilson, absolutely turned them into mincemeat, which is why everyone is crapping on them this week. Hopefully they do the same to the New York Giants. And honestly, man, I do think that Pittsburgh may even overperform. So the trends predict 23 to 14. I honestly think the Steelers could get back into the 30s this week. That is if Russell Wilson has another strong performance on primetime football. So still to come here on the Steelers Talk Preview, keys to victory versus the Giants. I got six of them to share with you guys today. Then we'll get into my Daniel Jones scouting report, and I'm going to tell you why I think he's a bottom five, if not bottom three, starting quarterback in the league today. Then we have my official Week 8 score prediction for your Pittsburgh Steelers going up against the New York football Giants. Now, before we get into the rest of today's show, go ahead and, you know, Russell Wilson is looking pretty darn good. At least he did in his debut last week. So if you want to get your officially licensed Russell Wilson Steelers jersey today, you guys can use our link, chatsports.com slash Russ, to get an awesome and brand new Steelers Russell Wilson jersey from our friends at Fanatics. Plus, it helps out the channel because if you use that link, chatsports.com slash Russ, I'll put that in the comments and description of today's show. You click that link and you make a purchase. Fanatics going to send us part of the proceeds. So if you want to help out the channel and you want to get a Russell Wilson jersey in your closet today, kill two birds with one stone by going to chatsports.com slash Russ. So my keys to victory versus the Giants. Only defensive key to victory that I have is don't let Malik Neighbors beat you. Okay, this guy is a special, special player. He's going to be for a very, very long time, and he's going to be going up against uh, a really, really good uh, outside corner in Joey Porter Jr. Now, I think that Malik Neighbors is the type of guy that can beat Joey Porter Jr. in certain scenarios, and because of that, if I'm if I'm Tara Lawson, if I'm Mike Tomlin, I am sending some safety help to help out with Malik Neighbors because he is that dynamic. So if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, all of your focus needs to go towards putting a lid on Malik Neighbors and not let him beat you because I'm not really all that worried about Daniel Jones and Devin Singletary and the rest of this Giants offense, if I'm being honest with you. They're not great up front on the offensive line, and Daniel Jones completely crumbles under pressure. All right, You take a look at my scouting report here. The two things I like about his game is that he's big. I guess that's something. And then, you know, he's a plus, uh, not a plus runner. He was a, he's a plus runner. <laughs> that's pretty funny right there. Um, but then lots of cons. Accuracy is spotty. The pocket presence is among the worst in the National Football League. And then he doesn't push the ball down the field. He doesn't trust his eyes. He tries to throw the ball close to the line of scrimmage and get the ball out quickly because uh, he's not very good at handling pressure. And in my opinion, he's a bottom five starting NFL quarterback. And, you know, the – too bad for Daniel. He has to go up against this Steelers pass rush, which has got monsters like TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and Cam Hayward coming after him. So I do think the Steelers will get a lot of pressure on him. I think he's going to make mistakes. I think he's going to take sacks. There might even be some fumbles on his part. So if I'm being honest, man, if you can cover up Malik Neighbors, uh, especially you know in the quick game, 
I just don't think that Daniel Jones is going to do much against the Steelers' defense. Then we get to the offensive keys to victory and the general keys to victory. Uh, for the Steelers, you got to pound the rock, okay? Because the way that you beat this Giants' defense, okay, is that you stay on schedule and you run the football. You take a look at what Najee Harris has done over the last two weeks, averaging almost six yards per carry. He has two touchdowns. He has multiple splash runs on 35 carries, which is always great. So Najee is playing like the first-round pick that the Steelers drafted him to be four years ago. And, you know, you look at the New York Giants, and right now they are last in the NFL in yards per carry allowed. They've also allowed the most explosive runs. So look for uh, Najee Harris and probably Jalen Warren to break a few really, really deep runs in this game, maybe get long touchdowns in the run game against this New York Giants defense. Dexter Lawrence is a really good player in this regard. But uh, everybody else around him is just not very good and not very disciplined in this new scheme led by Shane Bowen. So the run game needs to be big for the Steelers, and I think it will be. Then when it comes to the passing game, I think it's important that Russell Wilson and Arthur Smith cultivate a, a game plan here in the passing game to get the ball out quickly. Because the Pittsburgh Steelers, their, their offensive line is just, you know, let's just call it middling maybe, maybe slightly below average. And this... Giants defense, if there's anything that this team does well, is that they do get after the quarterback. Brian Burns has been awesome. Dexter Lawrence is such a game-changing threat from the interior, pushing the pocket, and he's going to be going up against a backup center in Ryan McCollum. So, plain and simply, this is a tough, tough uh, Giants defense to go up against, especially in third and long situations. And right now, you look at the Steelers' offensive line pass block grades, and it's just not... Fantastic, all right? Dan Moore and Mason McCormick have been pretty good, but Ryan McCollum, I thought, had some bad reps in pass protection on film last week and pushed back. Uh, and then Broderick Jones has been awful in pass protection all season long as well. And honestly, Isaac Sayamalo hasn't been fantastic uh, either in pass protection. So I think that the right plan of action in the passing game here um, is to give Qu Russ quick, easy reads, get the ball out quick down the field, or have an option. Uh, to get the ball out quick in the short game or go to a check down, all right? You need to get the ball out of Russ's hands quickly. That needs to be the plan because if he doesn't and he holds on to the football for too long, the Giants will get home, okay? And then if they send a lot of pressure, if they send a lot of bodies into uh, the box to, to prevent the run game with Najee Harris, you got to do what you did last week against the Jets and take advantage of one-on-one -on -one opportunities down the field with George Pickens. You got to keep them honest in the passing game, and you got to make them pay if they're going to send one-on-one -on -one coverage against George Pickens, who we know is an absolute lethal threat uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers down the field. And with Russell Wilson's ability uh, to throw those catchable touch passes down the field, uh, you got to make the Giants pay if they're going to load up the box and completely sell out for the run. All right, so you got to have that balance if you're going to put up a lot of points in this football game, just like you did against the Jets last weekend. And then just generally on offense, you want to stay on schedule, okay? Why do the Giants have so many sacks? this year is because they've done a pretty decent job at getting teams into third and passable situations, okay? So it's like third and seven, third and eight, or longer. The Giants are just really, really good. They are a top three defense in the league on third down. So the way that you combat that is that you get into third and manageables, third and six or shorter, uh, or you just keep moving the sticks and push the ball down the field. This is a team that gives up a lot of explosive plays. They give up a lot of first downs. Um, you know, you can really move the football on this team as long as you're avoiding those third and long. So for the Steelers, no penalties that put you way behind the sticks. You know, no interceptions, that kind of thing. You know, no negative runs on first and second down. you got to be able to keep on schedule if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, to score points against this Giants defense. Then the final thing here for a key to victory is don't beat yourself because you know, roster-wise, it's such a mismatch between the Steelers and Giants. That's why the Steelers are the heavy favorites to win at home this week. And plain and simply, if the Steelers avoid special teams mistakes, if they avoid turnovers, if they avoid silly penalties that just shoot themselves in their own foot, they should be able to win this football game. Okay, So if they're the more disciplined team, I don't think it's even a, a discussion. The Pittsburgh Steelers will come away victorious on Monday Night Football, which is why I have this one whopping final score, 31-3. to three. Um, If you want to say like 27-3, to three, I could certainly see that as well. Uh, maybe, maybe 31 is a bit much here uh, because this is just an absolute bludgeoning. Uh, but I just don't see this Giants team moving the football all that well. I don't see Devin Singletary moving the football 
uh, against this excellent Steelers run defense. I don't see Daniel Jones moving the football against this really good pass rush with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I just think it's going to be a very, very long night for Giants fans, and that's going to give the Steelers opportunities to score a lot of points in this football game. So predict a score for this one, Steelers versus Giants, down there in the comments section. I've got a blowout, 31-3. to Let me know what you guys think down there in the comments section. And make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you haven't already because we are going live on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern time to discuss this game. An hour and a half of pregame coverage, pregame tailgate, then live play-by-play -play of every single play of this game. Then we'll have extensive postgame coverage as well. We have the largest Steelers watch parties live on the on the YouTube platform anywhere on Steelers YouTube. So if you want a place to hang out with your fellow Yinzers on Steelers game days this year, make sure you guys click that subscribe button right now.